Hello, everybody. Welcome back for our second lesson called Bash in Data. Um, we're going to, we previously just ended using um, the terminal to go get data from ENCODE's portal and make sure um, the data was of good quality. Um, and today we're going to go, if you go to the class GitHub um, in the description below, uh, we're going to work today from O2 Bash in Data. And the goal for today is just to learn some basic fundamentals get everybody caught up on the same page of how to use a terminal um, and some basic bash commands. Um, so let's get into it. Okay, so what we see here is one of these markdown files, even though we're, we're going to do everything in bash. Um, and I'm going to go over some of these pretty quick because everything's written down as well. Um, the file we'll need from for today is the same one we had from um, the last lesson. Um, you can just download it real quick here. If you just paste that into your browser, you'll go right back to that report and hit download. Um, and we'll use that file to explore grep and awk and how you, you can use bash to explore data um, and change, change formats and other things. Okay, so some of the basics is you need to know how to get to where you want to go. So um, for here, we're just going to say cd this means to my home directory. So if I go to my home directory, I can then do ls and see where what's in there, which is ls is list. And pwd is uh, pretty useful where it'll tell you what pathway and directory you're in. So I'm in my users directory, Jory 21700. Um, I'm going to go back to the class folder that I was in. Um, and I can look and see what's in there with more detail if I do list dash lah. So if I do that, um, we'll talk about what these flags are and they're described right below here in a second. Um, but whoa, you get a lot more. And what's interesting to note is these dot files um, here we'll do in the next lecture um, connecting to GitHub so we can collaborate um, together. Um, but you can see these dot files dot get ignore. Um, whereas if you did ls, um, you won't see those like we did just a second ago. And that was just adding three different commands as a flag and most uh, um, commands have these flags and you can use the manuals we talked about in the last lecture. Um, and the LAH is just for long all possible files, including the dot files and human readable. Um, human readable is a, a, a dash H is a common um, flag in a lot of different um, uh, uh, different commands. Um, so let's do, learn touch. Touch it will make a file for us. So if we do touch test.txt, um, I already had one in there and I did not have one there. So now let's list and see if we can find this, see what we see. And what we see now is a new file has just shown up, um, test.txt. And if we want to take a look at it, um, sort of like we listed files, we can cat that file and it'll just print out whatever's in it. Um, and there's nothing in it. As, as we know, we just touched and the file's made, but that's a great way to make a file. Um, and then you can go into that file um, with a, with a text editor um, on the terminal. Um, we're gonna use Nano for this course because it's probably the most straightforward and simple one, but Emacs and VI, if you're familiar with those, can do a lot more um, in editing the file. So let's use Nano to go take a look at this file. So we just touched to make it cat to look at it, and now Nano to modify it. Okay, so now we're in here um, and you can just type anything you want. I'll just do Okay, so then um, that type that text. So it's just like a text editor. Um, there's no control Z or other things, um, but you can see some of the commands down here um, and go through them. Um, and to exit, uh, this is a control symbol. Um, you do control X. And now it's going to ask you to save the modified changes. If you don't save anything, it'll turn you right back to the terminal. And I'm going to say yes. So I'm going to type yes and then hit enter. And now I'm back here. Um, so now I can look at this file that was just um, empty a second ago. Okay, and so now there's text in it at least. Um, so cat will print out an entire file. We'll be using large files, so it's not as helpful when there's you know thousands of lines being printed on the terminal. It's not a very friendly way to read it. So uh, one one way you can just check to see what how your data um, file looks and how many lines there are um, is head and tail. So head um, will give you the top. Um, you do a, a flag line um, here. We were showing dash 10. Um, uh, 
uh, here. Um, and that means it'll tell you the top, it'll print out only the top 10 lines or tail um, 10 will give you the bottom 10 lines. We only have one line in this file, so it's not worth running. But it's good to know that cat will print out everything, um, but you're, you're going to sometimes want to just check the top and bottom lines, um, make sure they're in the right format. OK, so and you can do that with head and tail. OK, so now let's remove this file. Um, and that, if you want to erase something, um, remove uh, here, just rm. Um, we're going to remove test.txt. And if we list, OK, we can see it was here prior to that command, and now it's gone. OK, so let's, um, I'm going to go back and let's remake that file. So we'll do touch test.txt nano to open it up. OK, so then now I'm going to get out of this like we did last time. Um, so there's text in my file. And now we're going to um, use cat in a different way, where cat stands for concatenate. Um, so basically, when you cat a file, it's concatenating all the information in the file out to the out standard output. Um, with cat, you can also merge two different files into other files, about hundreds of files, um, if you wanted to. So let's make a second file. So we'll do touch test. Two.txt. Um, actually, to make this easier, um, two test.txt. That way we can uh, tab complete. If you hit the tab button, it'll complete um, something you're writing out. If it has a long file name, that becomes really handy. Um, and then we'll go into uh, two test.txt. I'm sorry, I've changed it a little bit um, from the uh, text there. Um, narrow to text there and say, OK, so I made some new text in a new file. I'm going to get out with Control X, save, yes, and enter. OK, so now I have these two files. And I'm going to cat them together and merge them. So we'll do um, cat test.txt. And why I put the two first there is now if I do that and hit tab, the computer is going to know that's the only file that starts with the two. If I did test.two, I have to type out test and hit the two, and then it would know it's unique. Um, and then we want to output the file. And whenever you want to output, you use the forward arrow um, to uh, three test.txt. Um, so now let's see what we get here. So we'll cat um, three tests. This is biochemistry box 631. We're learning batch. So what you can see is what it did is it added another line to the file. Um, and there's different flags if you man. Um, cat, there's different flags and when you do these merges of how you can um, do things. And there are other ways of, of merging things, um, but this is just a nice easy one um, to show its, its double purpose of printing out files and merging them. Okay, so now let's say we want to we list here. Oh my gosh, there's so many files. Let's make a directory. So to do that, the command is make directory is mkdir um, and we'll make that uh, um, We'll call this folder practice from the sheet. And we go like that. Now when we list, we see a folder called practice. Um, the folders are showing up here in blue. Um, and, and they may be a different color in your terminal. Um, OK, so we're going to move all those test files that we just made into uh, practice. So we'll do move. There's a new command here to move files around. Um, I'm going to skip the moving each one individually and go right to the wild card here, um, where star means move anything before this that ends in .txt. So you could have any string of anything, but if it ends in .txt, move it to practice. Um, and so what I'm going to do is because I have um, OK, well, we're just going to move all these files, even though there's some I still want to keep. <laughs> um, so we'll move star.txt and just move it to the folder. So you want to say that there's a folder where I am um, in this directory. There's another directory below me. So you put a forward slash, and that directory is called practice. Um, and you'll start seeing that a lot, that the forward slash just means one directory um, down in where I, from where I am. OK, so what we're going to do now is move uh, .txt, all of them, to practice. 
And so now when we list, we can see we have a lot less files, um, even though some of them uh, I'll move back later. Um, so that's a way if you made a bunch of files, you can just do real quick by finding a common string in there and, and then moving them uh, there. Okay, so uh, this is uh, uh, one lesson I'm just gonna add in here is a sim link. So I'm gonna go to my home directory um, as we did before and now I'll list it. And now you'll see this, this different colored thing called class. Um, and that means it's a sim link. And what it's gonna do is in, instead of typing this out every time shares ring class data class 2021 class folder, um, I, you want to make a sim link to it. So you can do that by doing ln. Um, you can uh, man that. So um, I'm not going to do this because I already have one. Um, but you can uh, paste this into your terminal, hit enter, list, and you'll see this new class directory. So now if I move this to class, so right now we'll do use pathway to find out where we are. Okay, I'm in my home directory. And now I'm going to um, move to this class directory. And now let's see where I am. Um, oh, it's still giving me the sim link. But now if I list, I'm here. Um, and now when I go to that, it's using the sim link. It's telling me I'm in the sim link to go there. But really where I am is shares ring class data class 2021 class. Okay, so the next step is the pipe. Um, this is a great and very powerful way um, to um, link commands together. So essentially the pipe will take the output of the previous side and put it into the next um, side of the pipe. So for instance, this is often useful when listing things. Um, you can add this to this new command word count, which will just count the number of words. And again, this is all written up here for you to read, um, but let's try that pipe. So we go list first. Normally we would get some output if we just did that. We'll pipe it to word count and we'll use the flag L. Um, so we, it's, the flag L is going to tell us the length um, of the things in list. So it's going to tell me basically how many files are in this directory. And there's 13 files in this directory. Okay. So um, this is a, a good practice thing to think about here um, using all of the commands we've just learned. Um, that if you put the pipes in different orders using, even though you're using the same commands, you'll get a different output. Um, so I'll let you play with that um, here and just see what the differences you get. Um, and remember that this forward arrow means output. So word count is going to count how many lines there are with the dash L and then move it to a file. Um, and you can see here you're doing the same thing um, over here. So look at the differences there. And we're going to move on to grep. Um, grep is great. It's kind of like um, the search bar where you try and find words, and but it's way more powerful because when you find that word, you can tell grep what you want back. Do you want that match or another uh, set of commands? Um, it's really powerful, but we're just going to do the very basics for today. So here's that .tsv file we downloaded from the last video um, and uh, worked through. Um, and so let's just uh, take a look at that file. Okay, so I'm just going to check where I am. Okay, I'm in the right place. And so we're going to head um, data uh, is where I have it. If you have it just directly in your folder, you can just type in encode. Um, oh, please rename it to encode awk lessons for this to work. Um, dot TSV. Okay, so if you have the TSV file in your own folder, you don't, you can just make it to the file path of this uh, file name here. And head's just gonna give us the top, um, print out the top uh, default lines. Let's add um, that we just want the first 10 like we did in above. Um, and then I'll copy this so I don't spell it wrong. Okay, so it doesn't like it when I paste it. Okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and see what this file looks like with the head command. So we'll do head data and then encode. And oh, I'm in data, that's why. Okay, so let's see what this file is all about with the head command. So we'll copy and paste this for to head um, 
in the data folder, the awk is where I have this uh, file. Okay, and we can see, whoa, that's really hard to read, but we can see that this file is, um, is uh, tab separated by the, all the dashed lines, um, but it's kind of hard to read. You can open it in Excel, it's a little bit easier to read. Um, so let's find a bit smaller of information. Um, let's say we want to look through this big file um, for uh, polymerase 2, which is the gene that turns on transcription or makes the RNA in the cell. Um, and it's usually termed polymerase 2. So we're going to look for the word pole um, using grep. Um, so uh, grep is as worth putting in the uh, looking at the manual. Um, and we're going to use the I flag which is matches any of the same type of letters. So in case somebody had an uppercase and not lowercase, and A is look, we're looking for a text match um, and not a numeric match. Okay, so let's run that um, here. And again, I'm telling it to go to this directory, to, to this file and look for this word inside that file. And then I'm using a pipe here to see how, how many times that occurred. Okay, so let's take a look here. Um, we'll go here. Okay, there's 11 of them. I happen to know that the answer is actually four. And what was what happened here is if you look at, um, if you print out this file, you'll see that there were other lines that weren't polymerase, but had pole in the text somewhere. And I use this as an example just to show you how it can be dangerous um, if you don't look at the results. Um, and so if you were to pipe this out or put an arrow here um, instead of word count um, and, and uh, do another file, we could see um, that these aren't the right uh, polymerases uh, we want. Okay, so let's um, do that. So now we're gonna do the same thing, grep for poll two in this file, but now we're gonna output it to a text file and take a look at it. So we go here. Okay, so now let's cat grep out. And whoa, we can see there's a lot. Um, and it's sometimes easier in these cases to look um, in Excel. I'm gonna use a file transfer system called Cyberduck. Um, we recommended in a previous lecture to have some form of file transfer so you can quickly just inspect um, a file. And we would have printed uh, grep out in this directory. I'm just going to bring it to my computer and then put it into Excel. Um, and let's take a look at it here. And what we can see, um, make this bigger. What we can see is that there's our poll twos that we're looking for, polymerase uh, two. Um, and now we know the right term, poll R2, in this file, but we've reduced this file with thousands of lines down to just a few or hundreds of lines. Um, and we got some of these other lines probably because there's pull two somewhere in one of these other lines here. So we have to tell grep to be a little more specific this time. So I'm going to close that file. Um, and let's do this where we're going to now say, I want an exact match with W. Um, and there's other flags that will be useful later. But now let's try this. Um, do that, and let's look at what we got now. Um, we'll do the same thing. Pull the folder to my um, to my desktop, and put it into Excel. And now what we see is that we got the ones we were actually looking for. So once you know your term, you can use grep, you can go in and find it, um, and then you can use awk and other things once you grab these lines you're interested in to do other things. So this is all can be done in Excel, but we wanted to teach you the bash way um, as well. Okay, so we've now seen that we can get the right lines, um, and, but it's important to double check these files um, in the meantime um, to make sure you're not getting something weird. Okay, so now we're going to um, talk about awk, which is a very, very powerful um, bash command. And this is going to look scary for a second here, but it's not that bad. Um, uh, and it's all written out here for you as well. Um, basically, awk will go into a file, but it needs to know the file, how the file is separated. Sometimes you have a tab, sometimes you have a comma, sometimes you have a space. 
And so in this case, we're saying, hey, Auk, the field separator is set at, this is the, the cache sign saying set it at tab. So now Auk knows everywhere it sees this symbol, it's a new column. And uh, in the TSV we downloaded from ENCODE is that sixth column has the name of the gene. So essentially we're kind of doing what Grep just did in Auk. Um, and this is uh, how uh, important to note here that everything in between these two quotes um, are the awk command that it's going to think about until it sees a semicolon. And then it'll think about the thing to the right of that until it hits a curly brace. So you can um, Google that. There's some explanation down here of what this all means. But basically what we're saying is this, this type of file, if, and then we're saying if, um, column six is equal to pull R2A, print the, what's in the standard um, output. So we're gonna print all the things that match um, pull R2A, and then we're gonna tell it the file um, that's here. And we're gonna just pipe this out to word count to see if we get four, like we had, ex had hoped for before, okay. Yep, so we got four, you can see here. Um, and we saw in the previous grep that we got four. So awk is really powerful because you can actually use it to program grep, but that's why grep is also used. So we can uh, do something a little more important. Let's print out, let's find out how many proteins we have in this file, how many unique proteins in fact. Um, so we'll use awk, um, a little bit different um, syntax here, but again, you can see awk is gonna think everything anywhere between those two points. And we're gonna say begin with the field separator is equal to tab. Um, and uh, then the semicolon is going to end that argument, and then a new argument is going to be set up with these uh, before it hits the final um, tick. So it's going to print column six. Um, the cache symbol says variable six or column six of this file. Okay, so let's see what we get. Okay, cool. It's a list of all the proteins that are in here. But we might think we're worried that maybe some of them are too similar um, and, and not unique. So um, what we're gonna do is use the pipe to um, put this into a command called sort, um, shown here, um, take a look at that. And what sort will do um, is sort things. You can sort things alphabetically. Um, in this case, it has a really powerful flag um, where we pipe, well, this is what we just did here. And now all we're doing is adding a pipe to sort to unique. The dash U will mean unique, and you can find that in the manual page. And then we're going to count how many lines are unique. Okay, so let's see how many proteins we're having. Uh, we're going to study in this class with just this one uh, command. We can do that. Ask that simple question. 480. Great. Okay. Last year we did 195. We have 480 unique um, uh, lines here. Um, and I'm not worried about these commas in this case because these are all the same gene. Um, okay, so um, and now let's say we wanted to output this to a file. We can do the same thing we just did. Instead of piping it to word count list uh, or length, um, we can uh, uh, pipe it to a file. So we have a new file um, of all the unique proteins in the class. Okay. Um, and oh, this is just uh, and, and a further explanation that Okta can print do multiple things in a row. You just have to do it by a comma. So in this case, it would print column one, column two, and column three. Um, and you can test that out and cat the file and see what you get. Okay, um, we're gonna end with for loops today. And um, these are really powerful, um, can seem kind of scary, but we're gonna start with some very simple things. Um, and in all the cases, um, this is written down before, um, the for is always gonna have an in and a do and done. So we'll look at one here, for x in, remember this says in a variable, and uh, where sequence is um, another Unix command to hit on the manual page, um, but sequence will say, I, if you tell me two numbers, I'll, I know how to find the sequence in between those two numbers. So we're saying, okay, for in the numbers one through 42, do, so there's the in and the do, and we separated the first one with a comma um, to say in there, look in one through 42, 
do echo um, as another Unix com bash command to look in the manual, but echo is just going to print whatever it's seen. Um, and then uh, bio, and it's going to print biochemistry 5631 is great. Well, I hope it is at least. Um, as, long, as well as this cache x. So remember, we set x here. So we said 4x in 1 through 42. Do, do echo or print this out. And with this after a space, print out what index you're in or in this sequence. And then a semicolon and you're done. So let's see what happens here. Um, we actually ran this one um, in a few lectures ago. OK. Oh, wow, great. So we see 42 times that biochemistry 5631 is great. Um, and that is really easy to do. Um, and you can uh, look through this, and it's all explained here. OK, another way that could be done is instead of using sequence, we could have just actually typed in four numbers. And let's see what happens with that. So we'll do four. Oops, I don't want to spell it uppercase. Sorry about that. It is case sensitive. OK, so now it wants to know what else to do. You can see we have a different bash prompt here with this arrow. And it's saying, well, what do you want to do now? And so what I want to do is echo BCHM5631. And then after that, it's going to say, well, now what do you want to do? And then I want to be done. But you could add more things in, in here. So then it did that. It printed it four times because it said for x in what's ever over here, Last time we gave it a sequence of numbers, you could give it a characters, whatever. It'll go into each index that's separated here and then do what you tell it to do. Um, and so, uh, so we can see here we, where we can do more things. And we'll end here um, with doing two things in a for loop. So we'll start with something we're familiar with from above, that for x in the sequences 1 through 50, OK, then we want to do um, and it says, okay, well, what do you want to do? And then we can say, I want to do another conditional for loop. So for y in A, B, C, so now we're not using numbers, we're just using letters. Um, now it wants to know, what do you want to do after that? I want to do um, echo. And then here I'm telling him the quotes that I wanted to print the x and y variables that it's at in the current moment um, as it's going through the loop. We can do that by this semicolon means x through y. Um, having trouble here. Uh, button. Okay. So we're going to have it echo that. And then we're going to tell it we're done. And it's like, oh no, there's more. I'm still thinking about this other thing. So we need, actually need two dones here. And so what we can see it, what x is, is where it is in the sequence of 1 to 50. And, for, and then it's saying, OK, when I'm in 1, I'm going to go look and I'm going to pull out A. When I'm in 2, I'm going to pull out B. When I'm in 3, I'm going to pull out C. Um, and when I'm at 4, I'm going to go back and pull out A. And if we scroll back up, that's how that will print out. It should be A, B, C, A, 1, 2, 3, because um, it runs out of index values here, even though there's more here. OK, so that is a quick overview of for loops. Um, and uh, there's a little bit more here um, to go over. Um, said, uh, is, as you can write here, we won't really um, use it, but it is a useful lesson um, to, to sort of know what that is. It basically is a find and replace. So if you had an old word and you want to replace it with a new word, you could do that. Um, and the flag um, I here is, is described below. Um, and then what you can see is in a for loop here. So for f in this um, there in this file, do said, and this is going to say substitute uf usf2 to usa. This is very dangerous. Um, and again, um, said is reading in between these these logic ticks, um, and then you give it the file name. So what this is going to do is go into your TSV. This is why I don't want to run it. Is go into the TSV and it's going to change anything that matches USB2 to USA. If you want to um, try that as an exercise, you can do that. And then you can switch them back um, just by flipping these around. So the dot S dash is substitute UFC2 with USC and G to end it. OK, 
that is it for now. We're going to do a for loop in class here to generate um, a class group list using for loops um, and random um, number generators. But I think you got to see some of the very basics of grep, awk, um, for loops, and um, said for find and replace. Um, and uh, you can go over it again here. So uh, we'll see you in the next lecture. And until then, code bite.